Miss Cookie, you want some brushes? Oh, I was sweeping the porch and she came up and rammed me in the leg and then drug her body down my leg. Got some pets. I tried to get the camera out, but she started walking away because you know she don't like to be on camera. Get you in your neck. Which part can I scratch? This? Oh, we'll get this. Oh. <laughs> what? Are you back for more? Why you side eye me one ear down? <laughs> Come here. I remember the day, the first time I ever did this, and this is how Miss Cookie got her name. Because I was brushing, I was sweeping the floor, and there were goats walking around, and I was trying to brush them with the broom. And Miss Cookie walked up, and I said, I think I said, can I sweep you? And I started sweeping her, and she just stood there, and she did not care. And the lovely age said, that's because Cookie don't care. And that, is how the cookie don't care came to be. <laughs> how beautiful. Get you right there like that. Oh, eyes going closed. What is up guys, welcome back. We missed the brunt of the massive storms that came through Illinois yesterday, which is good. They're pretty nasty. Uh, kind of calmed out, chilled out rained itself out a little bit before it got here but it is gonna rain today morning babies nope not you miss tic tac nope sorry honey go that way with the rest of the bye bye tiny herc good morning hopefully you don't plan on attacking me again today <laughs> I want to explain to you the the tiny Herc. Let me let all the moms out first, and then we'll get the babies on the moms. I do love watching them run around like little little crazies. I don't like being told that it's cruel and mean to take 12 seconds to get to the door. Well, you just got you just got wrecked, bro. Sorry. So yesterday it was hot. It was about 91 or 92 degrees. Silence. Sorry you didn't see that. Silence. <laughs> Everybody's chilled out, calm down, found a mommy. Everybody find a mommy. I'll get you guys mineral in a minute. But we had, and it was very necessary to uh disbud couple couple of the babes we disbutted whisper so now i definitely can't tell them apart i mean if you look at the back he's got the berries and she doesn't but from the front hi hi <laughs> hi <laughs> so whisper and i don't know one of the other ones tiny herc's trying to get a drink out of his blue bucket but it's raining He's gonna try again. Bubba, just just bend the rain around your will. Tell it not to touch you. You can do it. I'll get you some water, bud. Hi, good morning. <laughs> oh, his little tiny baby poops. Look at his little tiny baby poops. <laughs> Hi, Bubba. What's going on, man? I gotta tell you a story about Tiny Herc. And then I'll show you guys some video from yesterday. Did you just run? So last night I came over here to put the goats away. As I do, the babies know they're going to get fed in that stall. So they all huddle up there. I showed you guys a video of that once. They huddle up there and they go in the stall. And Mochi's babes are still kind of still in that go in the stall with mom phase. So they go in there and I can just pick them up and transfer them over to the other stall. Herc, tiny baby Herc. As he struts, you guys have seen him walk with his little baby. Strut like this, strut, strut, strut. He struts around the corner. 
He comes in here. His mom came in, Mochi came in, and Mochi's three babies. He stands right here in the middle. He looks over here. Mochi's babies lay down. Mochi's standing there waiting to get fed. Mooney's standing over here waiting to get fed. He looks over here. He looks over here at his mom. He turns around. He comes over to the gate right here, and he looks up at me. I open the gate. He walks out. He walks over here. He looks up at me. I open the gate, and he walks in the stall. No kidding. No joke. This little dude, ridiculous. <laughs> so awesome, dude. You're so awesome. You're so awesome. Uh, when he had <sighs> Coxidia, was it a week ago, I think? Uh, May, right around May, May 14th, May 12th, something like that. Uh, he had a little bout with Coxidia. We treated him with Tultrazeril. And he had dropped a pound. He was down to five pounds. And we weighed him yesterday because he needed a booster dose of Toltraz, and then he needed his CDT. We don't weigh for CDT. I'll explain that in a second. But he is back up to 6.5 pounds. So he's put on a pound and a half since, since mid-May there. <laughs> Mom is holding still. Going to sneak in there and get some food. Yeah. It's so funny when he's over here with the babies because... He'll go right up under them and put his head in a bowl and they can't stop him. Can't stop Hercules. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wanna go for a walk? Do I just hang out? What's up, big man? Hey, You're beautiful in every single way, my friend. You're just a beautiful soul. I'll get you guys some water. Uh, pouring down rain today. It is going to rain most of the day, so I'll just hammer out some soap. I, now, we have never forced our goats to be goats. And let me explain that. I'm a big softy. You guys know that only when it comes to my goats. Big softy. I always have hay in here in case they even just don't want to go outside and, and munch in the grass. Because of Ohio weather, not necessarily, it's me making excuses. I don't like if they have to stay in the barn during the day when it's raining or if it's really cold outside, they have to go outside and eat or whatever. So I've always had hay in here. And this year we've kind of taken a step back a little bit and said, you guys are goats. What would normal goats do if it was raining? You either choose to go out and eat in the rain or you choose to stay in the barn and wait the rain out and... That's been really challenging for me because uh, in my brain, I'm like, they're starving to death, but they're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. They are fine. They are full. Uh, we do feed them twice a day, grain, alfalfa pellet mix, sunflower seeds. Uh, so it's just, it's me trying to get past that mental block. They're going to do what goats do. They're picking around this hay bale. There's this little bit of hay bale over here but they're picking around that, but they're gonna do what a normal goat would do, which is not do much activity, lay down, wait out the rain, and then they'll head outside. Our goats, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, have always been little princesses. Don't like getting their feet wet. Hi, Chino. Good morning. <laughs> Mr. Pants. <laughs> What's up, buddy? He is awesome. Hi. What? You know, you and Zaro could be brothers from the front and the side. They both caught those beautiful head markings surrounding their eyes. Really cool. Really cool. So yesterday, I don't, I don't show disbudding on the channel anymore. The video would definitely be demonetized, and if not demonetized, it'll be blocked from being able to be shown altogether. It's just not worth the struggle to put content in a video, create a video, put it out there just to tell YouTube, or for YouTube to say, too bad, so sad, we're not going to show people what you're doing. The same reason we don't show administering uh, CD&T shots 
for some reason giving an animal a shot is mind-blowing and can't be handled by the general population anymore. That's the sad state that we're in. So every goat, regardless of size, from adult to the tiniest the little herks, wherever he is, gets two cc's, two cubic centimeters, which is basically two millimeters, two mm's, two cc's. <laughs> it's the tiny herc show. We have chosen not to disbud him at this time. Oh, fight it, big man. Because I do think he's actually pulled and I'm really struggling with it because of his small size. He might be horned. Now, he's not swirly where his horns are. And I've talked to you guys about this before. Some babies, they come out and they have such hard swirls right here that you'd know they're gonna be horned. When you feeling four horns or pulled, you have a couple things that you're feeling for. If you feel horns and they're real pokey, like you touch the tip of a pencil, a number two pencil for, for you old school folks, not the, not the mechanicals. Mm -hmm. If you touch that horn, it feels like the tip of a pencil. Not real sharp. Maybe one you've been using for a while that's dulled down and just rounded off. But it's definitely a point. When they're pulled, there's a bump there sometimes. Sometimes there's no bump at all. Sometimes, like I was showing you guys yesterday with uh, Captain Awesome over here, Mr. Zeus. I, we usually refer to it, and I think it's pretty common naming, are a couple of things. Gumdrop pulled, where everybody, I think most of us are at an age where we know what an old school gumdrop is. It's kind of like a little thimble shape. A lot of the pulled goats will have what feels like a gumdrop under their skin. And it's always round and smooth, but it's a bump. It's a bump but it's there and it's not pointy like a pencil. It's round and smooth. And then some of them will have what we refer to as giraffe pole. If you ever, I mean, you get it how you need to get it, Bubba. So mom's on top of the hay bale, so I will get up there and eat. <laughs> uh, you know how the giraffe has that little nub on top of their head? I think that's where that kind of giraffe pole terminology comes from. They have, they're pulled. They're not gonna ever get horned, but it's real tall. And then there's the horned. So you have basically smooth, and you rub your thumb on there, nothing there. You have gumdrop pulled, tiny little gumdrops. You have giraffe pulled, which is big giraffe horn feeling thing under there, like Mr. Zeus. And then you have horned, which feels like a pencil. And that's generally what you're looking for. And then there's a couple other factors like heavy swirls like you could see he had he was disbutted had heavy heavy swirls on his head <clears throat> can you reserve that for i'm dead and or dying not i did something silly and got stuck beside a hay bale goofball all you had to do is put it in reverse man goodness uh so that's how you determine whether or not your your goat is going to be horned or pulled <laughs> and uh mr hercules it can be challenging due to size and i've talked about this before with the girls a the girls sometimes don't develop horn material as quickly as the boys so you might get and here's a this is a classic example perfect example hey do not hey never never mess with tiny herc okay i have it so i look i can't have soft spot in my heart for you and President Snow and Tiny Herc and then have you guys fighting because it, it kills me. I don't know who to yell at. Be nice, you beautiful boy. <laughs> These two right here, Mochi's babes, perfect example. She, oh, that's who it was. 
it was both of Mochi's girls that got disbudded yesterday. Uh, Adonis came out almost with horns. You're like, he's gonna be horned. Like when he was born, he had heavy swirls. He had full legit bumps there and you just knew right away they were pokey that he was gonna have horns. Her, Whisper, when she was born, she had nothing. Her head was flat, she had swirls, so we were thinking she's probably gonna be horned. Uh, and she is, I think they're right around three weeks. <laughs> hi, I'm gonna say have, can you say hi to everyone? Yes. And good morning, Miss Betty Boops. Mr. Aries, okay. You guys are getting mud all over me. When when Whisper was born, she, she was flat. Nothing there, smooth, smooth as uh, could be. And, but with her heavy swirls, we're like, oh, we'll definitely keep an eye on her, see what's going on. And then, you know, him, I think we, we disbudded at like about seven days old, seven to 10 days old. And that was just us waiting for him to, to grow a little bit, be bigger. Uh, I would never want to disbud him on the day he was born, obviously. Generally, the bucks you want to get right in that uh, 7 to 10 day range or you're going to have problems. And, hi honey, how are you doing okay today? <laughs> this is the other one. So, he was ready to be disbudded the day he was born. We waited until he was 7 to 10 days old. These girls are almost 3 weeks old, so 21 days before they were really in a spot where we could legitimately tell that they were I flubbed the word legitimately there and then I stalled because I was like I'm not gonna reshoot that and sometimes I like to leave stuff in for you guys so you know I flub stuff <laughs> so we actually waited until yesterday so almost 21 days to uh, see if they were actually horns or or pulled I so that's my take on pulled and horned kind of understanding the differences As a rule of thumb, again, I always say every goat is different, every situation is different, but as a rule of thumb, you're gonna wanna get those boys done within seven to 10 days if you really believe they have horns. And with Tiny Herc, I don't, I don't know. Because, because of his small size, he may be horned and he may develop that horn much later the fact that they are almost eight weeks old and you can see his brother you can see the massive size difference between caster and herc i have a goat on my back just so you know <laughs> who, who is it I, I think it's from a little bit i can see i think it's zorro zorro but uh caster and pollux are both horned oh you, bubba stop and <laughs> hi jabuccino and they they were disbutted right around that seven to ten day range whereas tiny herc is the same age obviously half the size and is presenting with some bumps there but i'm not confident that they are horns so we're gonna just play the weight game with his size the difference is when this guy is a normal sized nigerian and he starts putting on horn and what they'll do is the bucks, oh, come here, you wanna be a test dummy because you're a weenie? The bucks, they'll put on horn here in this circle and then they'll also put on this horn that runs down to their na navel, <laughs> stop, nasal cavity, not navel, that'd be a lot of horn. So they'll put on this triangle shaped horn right here and it goes down to their skull like this. You've seen full size rams in the wild. It's kind of more of a triangle shape Whereas the girls tend to just have uh, a little circle where the horn comes out. The boys have that extra bit of horn. I think it's structural for fighting as they're gonna fight much more larger animals, much stronger animals. And they're gonna need that extra structural support in there. So it goes down, starts here and goes down this way, like this. That's why we disbud the boys in a figure eight. The longer you wait for that, the more horn growth you get down towards the nose, the more difficult it is to catch all of that horn material. And if you don't catch it, you end up with what's known as a scur. 
I fault no one for leaving a little bit of material accidentally and getting scurs. It is an extremely difficult game to play. Uh, Gummy here comes from a fantastic, amazing farm. And it was their first time ever disbudding their goats on their own. And you can see she missed that little bit of horn material. And Gummy has this crooked horn that grows around right here. She also has one over here, which isn't as bad, but this one we actually have to trim off from time to time. Huh, hi. <laughs> and it'll keep growing for the rest of their lives. There is a procedure that you can do, which I would never recommend and I would never do, where they go in, basically remove the top of the skull. They cut the head open, cut the skull out. You can see right down into the nasal cavity. You can see into the brain area and it'll all regrow, but then you have to wait, have them bandaged, wrap, not have them bump into anything. You know, if you, it's just a, it's just, I can't even show you a picture of it because YouTube will flag the video. But what they do is they go in, they cut off the top of the skull, which contains all the horn material. At a certain point, the horn starts attaching to the skull. And when that happens, you're done. So we took Gummy to the vet to get that that horn removed she said it's already attached to the skull there's nothing we could do except the i don't want to say it's a craniectomy but all we can do is remove the top of the skull containing the horn material i said uh no no way and moved on so that is a big long rambly rant that i do in my rambly ranting <laughs> so mr herc is in the weight zone to see is that your blue is he drinking out of, is your brother drinking out of your blue bucket go hit him it's your brother you're allowed so at the end of the day we're gonna wait for herc and we're gonna see see what transpires if he gets oh, he's brave in the rain i know it's splashy buddy it's splashy <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> So at the end of the day, we're going to wait for Tiny Herc to see if he actually develops horn material or not due to his small stature. Here, buddy. Here, let me help you. Let me help you. There you go, big guy. He's tipping the bucket to get the water. There's not enough in there. It's tragic. I got to fill him up still, so. Okay, that is it. Tiny Herc drinking water. Oh, Excuse you, Sneezy. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, let the weighing begin. I'm not going to really show it on video because it's really, really hot. It's so hot. And we need to do weights, toll trials and CDTs. And CDTs, so it's going to be probably an hour of... <sighs> yep. I'm hoping we can do it faster than that, but let's just see. Yep. So why do we have more goats than we need? Because there were a bunch of baby goats right here, and I was just reaching over the pen and kid, just kidnapping them. I'm like, might need you, might not. If I don't, I need better to have them and not need them. Can chunk you back out. Them. Yep, for sure. All right, let's get this body started. Hold on a second. Go ahead, catch her if you want. Little bum. We have is a <laughs> syringe station, medicine, disposables, so no babies. End up chewing on, sucking on, biting, getting a cap, anything like that. And then I'm holding the front and stabbing him. Mama's holding the back and praying. <laughs> Just hold him still. Try to hold him still. So they can't wriggle away. 